Hi everybody, how are we? Um, as you can see, we're not on an excursion yet this week um, because we're talking about NAPLAN and there's not really far we can go um, with our excursion around NAPLAN. But anyway, um, I've really enjoyed reading your debate comments. I've um, noticed that some people even though their surnames start with a different letter, have taken a different side, but that's okay. It's tr good to try and do both sides. I know some people have very, very strong feelings around that plan. It's a very contentious issue, which is why it's been chosen. And um, within globalised education, there are so many reasons for and against. I mean, when we're looking at the four cases, we're looking at um, one of the big reasons that that plan is even there and one of the things it gets assessed against is the whole of the world. So there are rankings, um, the PISA testing and a couple others, which compare Australia to other countries in the world. And Australia isn't doing that brilliantly compared to other countries in the world. And that was one of the reasons why, well, one of the rationalisations for why NAPLAN was brought in. So we're looking, we can see globalisation happening that way. But also one of the other problems is that globalisation leads to more multiculturalism. So if there's more multiculturalism, there are loads of ESL speakers in Australia. All the test is done in English and it's about English. And so is that really fair to be judging people and comparing them when it's their second language and it's other people's first language? So there are so many different factors you can start bringing in. And that is that first and second language is such a, an isolated thing to Australia because Australia is so isolated. And most people who've been educated all their lives in Australia very rarely speak more than one language fluently. And um, whereas if you go to other countries, well, especially European countries, most people are speaking two or three um, languages fluently and those sort of things aren't actually taken into account so anyway there's so many things we can talk about um, with NAPLAN it's been great when I've been looking through your arguments to see people actually including all their references in there so I'm just in group six at the moment and Kelly very bravely went first and she's put in her articles that she showed so you can see she's used the Guardian article which is fantastic because if we can use, we can use any news item, you can use anything to rationalise. It's about building that argument and building everybody's understandings of both sides of a debate. So I haven't seen many people other than me, and it might be because I've been answering them, actually getting in there and talking to the people or giving an opposing view of someone. So it's great. Christine has gone in and looked at Kelly's, which is great. Thank you, Christine, for doing that. And then, get out here. Yeah, then there have just been people putting their posts in. It would be really good to see some people arguing back. So if you've already put your post in, maybe get in over the weekend and argue one of the other people's posts who are on the opposition, because it's meant to be like an online debate. So <laughs> you could give them some articles or something to argue that they're wrong, and I'd love to see that. Remember, don't take anything personally. It's not meant to be a personal debate. That's why we made it so that um, it was based on your alphabet. So it's not saying, I believe this and you're wrong. It's you've taken this stance, I'm taking this stance, and it's like a debate. So it would be really good to see some people actually getting in there and arguing what other people have said. I'm just going to go to group seven now. Love technology. It's so good how you can do all this stuff so quickly. So Madeline got in there first and did a great job there. Oh, wait a minute. We're in group five. That's not where we need to be. We need to be in group seven. my group. <laughs> All right, Kasha got in first and no one has argued her. So yeah, even in group seven, it's the same thing. People aren't arguing each other. So 
now that you've done your post, well, a few of you have, I'm sure a lot of people will come in over the weekend because that's what seems to be happening at the moment. Once you've done a post, go in and find somebody else that you'd like to have an argument with and pop any of the resources that you can find in there. You're going to find this a really useful activity for when you get to the assignment and um, hopefully you've watched the Collaborate already. If not, get on and watch the Collaborate um, because it will really help you crystallise all the different debates that are going on around globalisation and what exactly globalisation is. So globalisation is simply... Uh, globalisation isn't just in education. Globalisation goes over pretty much every subject you're going to be able to study. So globalisation is about how communications and technology have made the world so much smaller and global. It's no longer just country, 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 continent. It started off like cities before we had cars and things. Then it went to countries when people had horses and carts and could travel around the place, boats. Then they had continents because then it was easier to communicate and travel. And now we've got to a point where it's globalisation because communication is instant, fast, all over the world. It's getting cheaper and cheaper to communicate with anyone anywhere. Travel is so much faster and it's getting faster and faster as um, planes and different ways of travelling are developed. So this is what globalisation is about. It's about how the world is becoming smaller and we now can connect with anyone all over the globe just like that. I mean, I probably am. I don't know who's not in Australia. And I know I've done lectures from over in Europe and it's been no one's even known that I've left Australia because the world is globalised. <laughs> so what um, I would like you to be able to do over the next few days before we get into week three is have a look at other people's answers. You don't have to write screeds and screeds and screeds of stuff. All you have to do is find something like a little article, a newspaper article, and they're so easy to find. The results have just been all released. I think it was really interesting, actually. Who was it? Millie. I loved that you took it from this perspective of being a student. So Millie has actually grown up with NAPLAN and gone to school and done all the NAPLAN. And she's able to tell, say how it felt from her own student perspective. She hasn't got the article there backing that up because there probably aren't many articles about that yet because this is a pretty unique area um, looking at student perspective in this way as she's done retrospectively and how she felt about it how she felt about the marks getting released things like that it's it's um actually I really loved reading that post Millie <laughs> so thank you for everyone who's done it so far keep up the great work I've been going back over um last week's as well because I know some people only enrolled in the last few days last week so they're still catching up if you haven't got to do last week's because it was just so overwhelming and you couldn't even get into blackboard site or something feel free to still be posting in the intro and activity one because i am still checking them and i will chat to you next week i promise we are going to go on an excursion so i'm going to be putting the videos up every thursday or friday because that way you've got to watch them over the weekend and you can go in and work on anything that's still going on during the week. So always keep an eye out for the videos coming out on Thursday and Friday. Um, also, if you've got any questions around Assignment 1, I know we've had quite a few already, which is fantastic. Just about the structure, what you're going to include in it. Remember, you don't have to use those questions. Um, that are actually written in the assignment you can add in your own ones or put different ones in it's up to you what exactly you're going to be putting in in the order you're going to be putting it in um yeah wait a minute, i'll just get the assignment out for you because we've had a few questions around this Just wait, sorry. I just get that out because I need to have that in front of me. Assignment 1A, short essay. All right. Does everybody else's jump around like this? It's really annoying how it keeps jumping. Okay, here we go. So, 
what you have to do with the assignment one first is to demonstrate an understanding of 21st century teaching and learning. Okay, so this is what you're trying to understand is the 21st century teaching and learning. And that is why we did the activity last week. It's really important that you looked in there and did that activity. Then you're just giving two examples of how globalised is, is changing. Now, we don't have to use exactly what we've got in there, like I was saying. You should be able to come from everything that we've been looking at and what globalisation is as to how it's changing education, as you would have seen in the Collaborate. And then you can look at how those changes are impacting. You don't have to do the ones that were mentioned in the Collaborate. You don't have to do exactly what everybody else is doing. You've got some room to vary it there and really think about globalisation and what globalisation is and why that's impacting on education and then how that is changing society. So define social change, give two examples. And um, I'd love to see a few more questions around these assignments because then I can see that you're trying to understand and get into it. Um, and they're very, very broad topics. Globalisation is huge. So just think about what aspects of that you want to talk about. Anyway, I'm going now. Have a great week. And I hope to see some wonderful arguments that won't be taken personally on the discussion board with some really good backing up articles. Okay, bye.